Uh, I've got <coughs> just two brackets of questions, and they're probably related to each other. Um, one being the recent announcement. Um, it's good that we've got you back, Senator Brandis, because I believe you might even have chaired the meeting. So Attorneys General and Police Ministers from across Commonwealth, State and Territory jurisdictions meeting in Canberra on the 22nd of May. One of the things that fell out of that meeting was a national facial recognition database. Um, so the AFP, I don't know if you've got the lead on this, but you're, you'll be part of the puzzle, obviously. Can you just tell us, fill us in on the basics of what you understand that, that um, database, uh, what, what its capabilities will be? Yes, Senator Ludlam. Um, that is, was one of the achievements announced at the meeting, and um, the AFP are the lead agency on this, so I'll ask oh, they are. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Colvin. Uh, sorry, Attorney, actually the department are the lead, but we certainly um, led the discussion in terms of the operational basis for the, our ability in terms of identity theft uh, particularly um, in, and the utility of having a more joined up facial recognition software capability across jurisdictions in this country. Right. The, the Attorney General's department are leading uh, a project in relation to that work, so they may, may wish to say more. I'm happy for people to chip in um, as, as desired. Um, can we maybe just step through that? What are the expected, rather than, or we'll come to the applications maybe at the end, but let's talk about the capabilities first. What will the system be capable of doing? Senator, I, I, I can assist uh, in Thanks. relation to that. So um, the, the um, capability is being established as a, um, a, a hub and spoke, the idea being that uh, agencies that already um, uh, obtain uh, facial biometric material, uh, whether it's a, a pass, pa the passport office, um, what, what we're um, creating is a, a capability to be able to uh, share and compare that with facial biometric holding held by another agency to give an, an, an enhanced level of being able to, to check the accuracy of that, that um, facial biometric material and ensure that um, it matches up adequately to the, the name. So it's not, it's not a, um, we're not creating a new holding or a oh. collection of facial biometric material. It, it's about being able to, uh, uh, enabling different um, holdings to be able to at least compare to provide a, a greater level of certainty that the um, biometric material is, is accurate and, and is connected to the identity of the person who's purporting it to connect to. Okay. The two largest holdings that occurred to me would be passports, so it's one, one side, and yes. driver's licences would be the other. Yes. Um, that's in terms of sort of still portrait style for photographs of people for those two use cases. What about um, CCTV cameras and licence plate cameras? The, the reason I put that to you is uh, in the Queensland and South Australian jurisdictions, there are election commitments made in both of those two state elections. <coughs> respectively, of police making greater use of facial recognition technology for capturing, uh, for tackling crime. Um, and they were, their uses were specifically related to CCTV cameras. Senator, we certainly have been um, liaising and consulting with road and traffic authority agencies in each of the states and the territories. Um, as far as I'm aware, we have had no discussions relating to um, CCTV TV material uh, as being capable of um, connecting into this um, uh, capability. Um, but it, if I could take that on notice uh, to check whether there has been any um, discussion of that. But at this stage, it, 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 my understanding is all our discussions are focused on driver licence uh, material in terms of discussions with the states and the territories. Huh. What about passports? Uh, yes, certainly passports uh, is one of the the, yeah. agent, yeah, the, the holdings of um, DFAT passport office is one of the holdings that we're looking yeah. at. Um, what are the other, you, you can provide this on notice if you like, it might be dozens for all I know, but what are the other major archives that you would be seeking to stitch together? Look, I, I will take that on notice if you don't mind, Senator. Yep. I mean, it is largely, uh, you, you were correct, it's largely passports and um, driver's licence. Okay. I mean, uh, I, I think... Uh, the number of people over 18 who have a driver's licence uh, in this country, I think, is above 80 per cent. So yeah. that's the most significant holding. All right. Um, the chair's being reasonably strict on, on timing, so I might just ask if you could to take on notice for us the holding, the agency that's responsible for holding them and the size of the database. Yeah. Now, oh, does... Look, Senator, sorry, yeah, just ahead. to... So, in a sense, we're not creating a, a database, we're creating a... Yeah, a, I mean, a, a of the hub kind of catchment. Yeah. yeah, so describe for us what will be in the hub, 
presumably there is some elaborate piece of software designed to index to make sure that you're deduplicating and that kind of thing. So I understand the spokes, I guess they already exist, but tell us a bit about the hub. The, the hub will essentially, um, and I, I will have to um, uh, be careful in terms of my technical capacity to uh, I explain the mechanics of it, but um, it, it's, a, it's sort of a, a connecting, so it's just a, an ability to be able to connect in real time uh, to check the identities. It's, it's not a database as such where these, <coughs> excuse me, identities will be held. Um, so the, the, the identities are still in the holdings of the agencies um, that um, uh, provide them. How will it be used? So if, I'm, if I am a law enforcement agency and I come into this new thing with a photograph of somebody who's suspected of doing something, do I hand this photo over to the service and they try and get me a match, or how will it actually be used in practice? Um, uh, in practice, uh, if I could give an example of someone who was um, seeking to um, get a driver's licence in one jurisdiction, uh, the issuing agency for that driver's licence, if they, if they produce um, another form of identity uh, in order to be able to satisfy you know, the, the, the points requirements to, to get um, that type of um, um, uh, uh, document, uh, that they could then use that to check with the, the original issuing agency um, and perhaps if they have both a passport and a driver's licence, say, in another jurisdiction, uh, you'd, need to be, you'd be able to do a real-time cross-check uh, to check that the, the photo and the name are accurate. Matched. Got yep. it. Okay. Um, which agencies will be able to access it? Um, it will be law enforcement agencies uh, initially, but uh, in terms of the, the full list, I'll, I'll, I'll take that on notice and it'll be subject to finalisation in legislation. Yeah, I guess it's fairly new. So it will need to be legislated. Are we amending a particular something or are we introducing a new act to bring it into being? It, 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 the, it will require um, amendment of uh, state and territory legislation huh. uh, because um, uh, the, obviously their, their legislation covers the issuing of their um, identity uh, material, facial biometric material, whether it's driver's licences um, or, or anything else. Um, I think our current assessment at the moment is in terms of the Commonwealth, we may not have to um, make uh, any legislative provision for it because it relates to um, uh, material that's already collected under legislative provision, say the Passports Act, um, and any um, re legal requirements uh, about the, the use of that um, facial biometric material will be covered in that original act, including any privacy um, limitations related to that. Okay. If you could provide us with the, the agencies, understanding that this is a reasonably new proposition, if you could provide us with a list of the agencies that will be able to access it, and under what circumstances, what will govern access to the database, and so having search rights and so on. Um, will it be administered, again, I'm talking about the hub, because I, I well understand that you're looking at collections all over the country in different, different archives, but will it be administered by the department? Yes. Okay. Um, does it require does it have a particular funding appropriation? I don't know if that was in the communique or not. Yes. Can yes. you just tell us um, a bit about that? The, the, the department was appropriated funding um, uh, in uh, September 2014 uh, as part of the broad package of uh, national security funding that the government announced uh, at that time. Uh, we have uh, $12.6 million um, in departmental funding for uh, in implementation and uh, operation of the hub. Uh, and uh, $5.8 million uh, in administered funding, which we are um, providing in order to be able to assist the states and the territories um, to facilitate, um, should they choose to um, be involved in, in the um, mechanism, um, for them to be able to connect into the hub. Okay. Now, I want to be a bit clear because I'm not sure if we've got anything going in on notice or not, but police forces around the country are increasingly linking facial recognition technology, live access to CCTV cameras, and also, you know, I think even Facebook has, is getting better and better at automatically recognising and tagging people's faces. So there's big open source photo archives and then there's obviously access to CCTV feeds, um, and that's for tracking individuals of interest almost effectively on a real-time basis. 
I'm very interested to know, it feels to me to be inevitable that this system would be patched into those systems if they're being developed by state law enforcement agencies or whatever the AFP has afoot. So what can you tell us about how this hub will be linked or coordinated with other facial recognition technologies that are being rolled out in the states and territories or at a Commonwealth level? Senator, uh, as I said before, at, at this stage, I, I, I don't. We, ha we haven't got to that point. Uh, the, the, the focus has simply been on the sharing of uh, materials such as driver's license, passport material. Um, but I, I would like to take that on notice. Um, there have been a, a range of discussions with the states and the territories. Um, I can't say that people have flagged that that might be something that they were interested in looking at further down the track, but it, it's not currently envisaged as part of the operating model. I would find it extraordinarily implausible if I'm the first person to have thought of the idea of maybe matching those various technologies together. That would be quite something. So I'm presuming those ideas have been had. So yeah, whatever you can provide us with, I'd, I'd greatly appreciate. Um, and how is the database to be linked in with systems used by the Immigration Department in tracking people coming in and out of the country? That's part of the use case, presumably. Um, uh, again, um, uh, we have been talking with um, the Department of Immigration because uh, they, they have uh, obviously been enhancing their capability at the they have. Um, at the borders as well with the Spark Gate. Um, in terms of the specifics of, of how they will interact, I think that it's subject to discussions, but it hasn't, hasn't been worked through finally. Um, if I could take that on notice. All um, right. That's quite a bit of homework. Sorry about that. Um, just for final questions, we've only got a few minutes to go. Um, just Commissioner Colvin, the AFP's new data centre transition project, do you want to just tell us why that's occurring and roughly just what the scope of that is? Certainly, Senator, I'll hand over the Chief Operating Officer, Andrew Wood. Andrew Wood, Chief Operating Officer. Uh, Senator, the AFP currently has a data centre at a site here in Canberra in a suburb called Holder. Uh, that particular site doesn't meet our future requirements and our lease on the site is also expiring. Oh. So we do have a uh, second data centre in the Canberra suburb of Hume and we're in the process of going to the market to look for what would become our backup site. Right. Uh, so it's because our existing second site uh, in uh, Western, sorry, not Holder, our existing second site is um, not, not going to be operable in about 24 months' time. Okay. So is a proposal to build another two or another one? And do you uh, build, is it the AFP actually build them? Do you contract them? Do you use commercial providers? Just if you want to just let us know how, how you run that into the business. Sure. The engagement with industry will look at the most cost-effective option. Uh, but certainly it's government policy for agencies not, as a matter of course, to build their own data yeah. centres, but rather to uh, firstly work collectively as a whole of government, and secondly to look at the capacity of industry to, to provide solutions rather than the Commonwealth owning uh, All right. those solutions. And what's the current setup? We currently, uh, the one at Western is one that we, uh, is, is on our own leased site, and so we own that data centre. <coughs> uh, the one we have in Hall is co-leased with the Department of Finance and we own the equipment inside that site. So at the moment the AFP controls both its data centres but we'd be looking to uh, abide by whole of government policy in this space in any new arrangement and that therefore means that we'd be looking more closely at a whole of government and industry partnering arrangement. Okay. Um, do you run all your own email accounts presumably for that's all held internally, I'm presuming that's not outsourced there's, to There's one provider. very small exception to that, and that is we have a, an unclassified email system to ensure that we maintain uh, good communications with staff offshore who don't necessarily have access to right. classified systems. That particular system is in the cloud space, but certainly all our AFP business systems that are at a protected or higher level are in various environments that are Commonwealth controlled. Okay. So the 17 and a bit million dollars will provide you with one or two new facilities by the time we're done? We will have two, but the money is for, for the new one. one additional okay. to replace Western. Um, this might sound like an odd question, but you're running email servers for your staff and operatives. Are you subject to the same obligations as commercial service providers as regards data retention of all of that material? 
Uh, I imagine the Archives Act actually puts even more obligations on us. Um, there's, there's a mix of requirements placed on us. Uh, we're not an ISB provider, though, and we're not no. a telecommunications company, so I suspect legislatively we're probably not captured by what you're referring to, Senator. Uh, but because of our archives requirements and our requirement to maintain information in relation to matters that may still be appearing before court, etc., there's a range of requirements on our retention of data. Do your staff use commercial service providers for your mobile phone use, or do you have separate arrangements? The AFP has a contract with um, with one provider. Okay, with commercial service provider. Yeah, you don't. Yeah. You're not. You're not also running your own phone company. That's correct. We're okay. not. Okay, and presumably they are then subject to the department's new requirements for mandatory data retention. Uh, yes, Senator. They've been one of the very active participants in some of the debate. Oh, I have no, absolutely no doubt about that. I don't know who it is, and I probably don't even need to know unless you're able to tell us. No, that's Telstra. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's, well, there, it's, no, it, it is the commercially. Chair was about to shut that line of questioning um, down, but it, it's it, Telstra. Because it's engaged through a normal government procurement process. Yeah. It, it's on the public okay. record already. Okay. So it's, that's it's all of your folk. Does it include undercover people, people working in very sensitive areas? They're all with the commercial Probably not appropriate provider. to answer that one, Senator. Huh. I'll let that go. Thanks very much. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Senator.